Many people have heard about and are talking about the proposed changes to the highway code that will come about later this year in autumn 2021. But lots of people are unsure about what these changes are. In fact, many websites that I've found seem unclear themselves as to what these changes are. They simply refer to the fact that there will be changes, but without going into any specific detail. So that is what I'm talking about today. But if you're new to my channel and to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. So please hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future videos. I do live streams at least once a week and I answer your questions over at my sister channel on Black Belt Secrets. So in many areas of society, the law is often created around the rights, duties and responsibilities. And it has always been the case that road users have a duty and responsibility to each other. But over the years, numerous cases have come to court and the questions have been raised as to who has higher priority, who should give way to who, and who is responsible for damage caused to another in the event of road traffic collisions, be that with vehicles and each other, or vehicles and pedestrians, vehicles and cyclists, and so on. So after lots of cases like that and lots of discussion, the government is introducing a raft of different changes to the highway code which is going to clarify the hierarchy of responsibility between road users. And that is essentially the basis for the changes that I'm going to outline for you now. Now whilst, as I said, all road users have always had some level of responsibility to each other, and drivers have had responsibility to cyclists' safety, and cyclists have had responsibility for their own safety, and likewise pedestrians, these changes are going to look at the risk factors of which road user can do more damage to another road user, and set that hierarchy accordingly. So the essence of the changes means that drivers of vehicles are going to have the burden of responsibility for ensuring the safety of cyclists and pedestrians in various situations. Now these changes don't mean that the cyclists and pedestrians are no longer responsible for their own safety, but what it does mean is that drivers of vehicles are going to face much tougher questions if a case gets to court if the cyclist or the pedestrian is injured by said vehicle. One of the ways this will be implemented in the proposed changes is who has priority at junctions. As such, drivers of vehicles are going to be expected to ensure the safety of vulnerable road users, that is cyclists, pedestrians and horse riders, when approaching or traversing a junction. This includes whether those vulnerable road users are crossing the junction, waiting to cross the junction, or even approaching the junction and likely to cross it, whilst the vehicle driver is approaching said junction. This means that if you are driving a vehicle and approaching a junction, whether that be a left turn, right turn and so on, you will need to look out for whether there are any vulnerable road users either crossing it, waiting to cross it or approaching to cross it and likely to cross it. And if that is the case, you are going to have to wait until there is a safe opportunity to execute the maneuver around the junction effectively yielding priority to that vulnerable road user according to this hierarchy. Similarly, if you are driving alongside a cyclist or horse rider who is also about to use the same junction where you are about to turn or cross, you are going to have to give way and allow the cyclist or horse rider to make the turn or traverse the junction ahead of you. Another change clarifies where vehicles are overtaking cyclists, horse riders or pedestrians. As a cyclist myself, I have had situations where vehicles, even lorries, have passed me close enough to reach out and touch, which is obviously extremely dangerous. The new changes will require at least one and a half meters clearance at speeds under 30 miles an hour when passing a cyclist. Whereas if you pass at more than 30 miles an hour, at least two meters clearance should be given between your vehicle and the cyclist. Whereas for pedestrians and horse riders, this distance is also two meters, but you must keep your speed at 15 miles an hour or lower. If that simply isn't possible, then again, you are simply going to have to wait until there is sufficient space and time to give that clearance. Whereas previous rules have just said, maintain a safe distance from the cyclist. This is formalizing the distances and along with this hierarchy. Pressure for these changes has come about during the pandemic when many more people have been out walking, cycling, horse riding, making the most of the opportunity for exercise, which in turn has given rise to a need to improve the safety requirements when vehicles are passing cyclists, pedestrians and horse riders. Now on the one hand, many drivers who are not cyclists, do not walk, do not ride horses, are going to be frustrated with these changes because the driver is going to have to ensure the safety of these other road users as a matter of priority. And sometimes that is going to cause delays to journeys, but in the end, it is going to ensure that the roads are safer for all of those that are cycling, walking, 
or riding horses, which ultimately is going to save lives and reduce injuries. So like many areas of law, these changes are going to consider the risks and take a risk-based approach to various vulnerable groups. In this case, road users who are more likely to get seriously injured or killed. So in due course, I will do follow-up videos as to when these changes are actually implemented and whether there are any further changes before that happens. But in the meantime, I hope that is a useful overview if you haven't managed to find one. And remember, stay humble and subscribe.